Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Welcome back to uh, ELEC 3204. Um, so first of all, let's uh, recap. Um, this slide was, uh, this slide was, this page was a page that I requested you to take a mental picture of um, last time. So there are three levels of, uh, uh, of channel modeling. First, first level is the uh, propagation path loss, which is the uh, power loss uh, due to uh, so the signal's path loss over distance. So, um, um, so that's the first level. There are three types of uh, propagation path loss. Uh, we have learned uh, three methods. First one is uh, free space path loss, which is a function of distance, but it's a uh, uh, distance of second power so it is uh, in the form of one by distance square and then the second is uh, 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 ground reflection two ray model which has so uh, which is associated with one outside and one ground reflection link um, so it's also a function of uh, distance but it's uh, in a function of uh, distance of power four. And then the third path loss uh, model that we learned was uh, Hata's uh, uh, urban model, which is approximated based on measurement. Um, so I have learned three methods, uh, three uh, modeling methods for uh, propagation path loss. And then shadowing effect, which is also called slow fading, is uh, where you have a sudden uh, blockage uh, due to building um, or hills that, that blocks a uh, long side. So basically, if you have a base station here, if you only have propagation path loss, which is a function of distance, then uh, there is a circle here. If you walk, if, if you walk around the circle um, with the same uh, radius, then the signal power should be the same along the circle. However, for the shadowing effect, uh, there will be blockage at some positions. So at a certain locations, power loss would be more severe, severe. And then fast fading is uh, due to a multi-pass effect where you have uh, a transmitter and then a receiver and then you have a uh, line of sight and also you have a lot of uh, reflections. So all the signals, they are right they arrive at the receiver with different power, different delay, different phase rotations. They sometimes aid constructively, sometimes aid destructively. Um, so uh, for the first two levels, we mainly focus on the power loss, so power loss of the received signal. And then for fast fading, we need to take into account both power loss and uh, the phase rotation that's imposed onto the signal. So we normally represent fast fitting by a complex value. So we'll be talking about uh, talking about fast fitting a little bit more today. Um, I've been asked um, a question by email, which is a very good question. Um, it's about equation for ground reflection model. Um, so the equation here, uh, if, you, if you look at some book chapters or the Wikipedia page, uh, you can see that the second part of this equation, uh, for example, on Wikipedia page, uh, there's no pi here, only two sign uh, set up by two. Um, the reason there is a pi here is we have specified the assumption here that uh, the reflective wave has um, pi readers out of phase compared to the line of sight. 
So, uh, so if it's theta by two, then when theta equals zero, it is the worst case where the received signal is uh, zero. However, with uh, the pi out of phase, when theta equals zero, two sum pi is the best case scenario. So there is a kind of out of phase effect. Um, so, so yeah, sometimes you probably will see equations in different forms. Uh, it's mainly because when, um, so the equations were used in 2G era uh, have evolved um, over the years, um, but the rationale is the same. So for example, the, the equation we want to show you here will arrive, eventually arrive here, um, which is which, which is meant to represent that uh, the received signal um, power decays with the force power of the distance here. So whether you have the pi out of phase or, or not, if it would follow the same steps. Um, so I, I would suggest you to stick to the slides um, so that there will be no mismatch between slides and uh, exams. Um, but if you, if you if you if you spot any arrows or any uh, different formats compared to your uh, book chapters, uh, do let me know. Um, I'll see what I can do. Um, so let's uh, see fast fading. So as I, as I said earlier, fast fading is due to multipass uh, effect. Um, so signals, uh, so many copies of the signals, they arrive as a destination at the same time. <clears throat> uh, Doppler effect, you probably have already known Doppler effect before this course, and uh, I mentioned it many times throughout this, uh, this, uh, this sessions. Um, we'll talk more about it uh, in, not today, it's so next session. <clears throat> you probably uh, haven't learned uh, the uh, impact of Doppler effect on uh, fast fading or on multipass. <clears throat> so, so basically, uh, fast fading is uh, it would it, it would make signal power fluctuate uh, really quickly, um, and Doppler def effect determines how fast the fluctuation is. So the higher Doppler frequ uh, frequency or Doppler effect, <clears throat> the higher Doppler frequency is, uh, the quicker the channel fluctuates. Um, I will show you uh, in the next session on Friday. And fast fading is also determined by other parameters. Um, I will introduce them um, together with Doppler effect um, on Friday. So last time we looked at uh, the complex value representation for fast fading, and uh, I have requested you to uh, take a look at the supporting document on the course website. So basically, uh, we want to take into account both uh, amplitude gain um, and uh, the phase that's imposed on the signal. So uh, fast fading is represented by a complex value here. The real part and imaginary part, they are both modeled by Gaussian distribution. <clears throat> so last time I finished here, um, basically there are a lot of words here, but uh, the, the main message for you is, uh, um, so, so real part and major parts, they are Gaussian distributed, and the mean value is determined by line of sight uh, power. So line of sight power is a mean value. And then the variance uh, of the real part and the variance of the imaginary parts are, <clears throat> are non-line non of sight power. So we want to make sure that uh, all the signal powers, they add up to one. Um, 
So there will be distribution of the amplitude and there will be distribution of the phase. Um, so our aim today is uh, look at the distribution of the amplitude first. Uh, do stop me anytime if you have any questions. Um, so basically here we have two Gaussian variables and we have their power added together uh, with a square root. Um, so basically if, if we have a total number of n Gaussian variables and have their power added together, we have chi-square distribution. Uh, so specifically for 24, you are not required to remember uh, this uh, this format of uh, chi-square distribution, but it's important to understand that first of all, um, why we introduce chi-square distribution here, because uh, this is a general general form generic form form that when you have to some number of n uh, Gaussian distributed variables, uh, as power. Um, it is together, it follows chi-square distribution. We want to use this distribution later on to determine the amplitude of fast fading, which has two Gaussian distribution distributed variables uh, power. So fast fading's amplitude will be a special case of 24. And then, um, and then 24 is uh, a function of uh, y, uh, which is uh, the summation of all the powers. And it has also another function here, i, which is uh, the modified case order based function of the first kind. And then uh, i function here also contains another function, gamma, which is defined in here. So, uh, so from 24 to 26, uh, you are not required to remember the details, <clears throat> but it's really important to, to understand why we introduce chi-square distribution here. And, uh, and also uh, what, what is uh, this PDF a function of and uh, the meaning of i. So for the fast fitting amplitude, for the fast fast fitting amplitude, we have only two Gaussian uh, distributed variables. But um, so it it is a special case of chi square distribution. It's called Risen distribution. Um, so fast fitting that follows Risen distribution is also often called Risen fitting. So we know here that uh, gamma is a variance of uh, of the non line of sight um, signal uh, channel uh, fading power. Sorry, non line of sight uh, fading power. And then ice is a mean value, which is uh, the line of sight fading power. And then I zero, we can use this one here. So it's the zero order uh, basal function of the first count. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so this is a function of y, which is uh, the power of the fitting. We want the amplitude of the fitting, which is a value that's applied to uh, the signal. So when you have a signal, it's applied with uh, this amplitude and also a phase. So this whole thing is a complex value. This is a fitting. And then we normally also have a noise. This whole thing is uh, the received signal. So we want, um, a PDF of the amplitude. Um, so before we put this uh, into this function, we need to make sure that the integral still comes to one uh, for PDF 
so we need a normal normalization factor here so we put this into 27 and then we use a normalization we we'll arrive here which is a pdf as a function of uh, of the amplitude uh, so that's a fitting amplitude so 27 and 28 are a little bit more important because that's the PDF of the <coughs> fast fading. <clears throat> and you need to know uh, the meaning of uh, sigma and the meaning of uh, s, which are uh, the variance and the mean. And, and they represent uh, non level side and uh, level side, and also meaning of i0. So uh, we know that the power of long side and power of non non long side they should uh, add up to one. Here we also define a power ratio, which is uh, uh, the power of uh, long side fitting and the power of non long side fitting. So, for example, when you have a transmitter, a receiver. Long side is a direct link from the transmitter to the receiver. And then you have a lot of reflections. Uh, sigma is the power of all the re reflection power, all, all of them combined. Um, so if we put k into the previous equation, we arrive at uh, 30. So this PDF is still a function of the amplitude. And we still have uh, sigma. And another par parameter here is uh, k factor. So there was, uh, there was uh, quite an influential trial probably 20 years ago, which measured um, aer aeronautical communication uh, fitting environment, so airplane communication. So the trial was uh, during the ta uh, taking off. So when the airplane is still on the ground, but it's starting to taking off, the K factor was uh, <clears throat> was uh, smaller because you have a lot of reflections on the ground. You have a lot of reflections on the ground when the airplane is taking taking off. On the ground and then afterwards when the plane is high up in the in the sky so it's really far away from the ground there's an airplane and there's a ground and then if you transmit signal from the airplane to the ground or the other way around um, the pay factor for the channel would be like infinitely high it's almost as if you don't have fading at all. Uh, you don't have fast fading at all. So the receive signal here is multiplied by one. There will still be pass loss, and there will still be pass loss. So signal still uh, fade over distance, <clears throat> but uh, it will be all, almost like there's no reflection at all. But actually, there are reflections. There will be reflections. Uh, from the ground, there will be hills somewhere and buildings somewhere. There will be reflections. However, for airplane communications, the airplane is so high up in the sky, the distance uh, from the airplane to the ground station is already very large. So all the reflected links, they are so weak. As a receiver, you don't you wouldn't be able to detect them. So as I mentioned before, what is a uh, wireless channel? Wireless channel is modeled from the receiver's point of view. So if you cannot detect um, a pass, then that pass doesn't exist to the receiver. Um, so later on, as the plane uh, descends and approaching to the ground, uh, K factor would uh, decrease again, so uh, the long side power would decrease because you have more 
uh, reflection reflections on the ground. So yeah, I hope I hope that would help you to kind of visualize uh, how K factor can change uh, in realistic uh, terrestrial communication scenarios. So most of the scenarios on the ground, uh, we wouldn't observe a K factor being changing that quickly. Um, however, for example, when there is a sudden blockage, like uh, a moving car that suddenly block your line of sight, uh, then you would observe a change in K factor. Um, but in general, K factor doesn't change that quickly. Um, so here, um, we say when K factor is um, become zero, so there will be no line of sight at all. So S equals zero, which is the mean of the fast fading variable, is uh, it is zero. Then the recent distribution become really distribution, and uh, when fading follows relay distribution, the fading is also called relay fading. Um, so this is also a very important dis distribution function. It's quite simple. You only have the power of non line of sight elements, right? Because not, uh, line of sight, there's no line of sight at all. And it, it is a function of the amplitude. So uh, basically, when k equals zero, uh, recent distribution become relay distribution. This is a special case of recent uh, recent distribution, and then recent distribution is a special case of chi square distribution. So it's important to uh, follow that rationale. Um, so I mentioned as k become uh, infinite. It's almost a certainty that uh, the fast fading element is one. So it's almost like there's no fast fading. Um, so because it's a certainty, uh, the PDF become a direct delta shape. So we can look at uh, the slide figures on here. Basically, as uh, k k increases, uh, so as k increases, the PDF will look more and more like uh, a direct delta. Can anyone tell me uh, why the PDF is centered at zero dB? So the x axis is uh, amplitude. So y the PDF is center at uh, zero dB here. Can anyone tell me? Any guess? Yes. Go ahead, Oliver. Probably mute yourself. Wait, wait, we still can't hear you. Right. Um, so I'll answer it myself then. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Uh, I'll answer myself then. Um, no attenuation. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yes, exactly. Uh, well done. Um, so last time we uh, we talked about uh, there is a chance of. Uh, <clears throat> So also, <clears throat> um, all the copies of the signal, they add together as a receiver, sometimes constructively and sometimes destructively. <clears throat> so there is a chance of having, uh, having channel gain. And there is uh, also a chance of uh, losing signal power. We don't overly worry about uh, the situation when we have a uh, channel again, because it works in our favor. We don't need to do anything. However, when there is a signal 
power loss, for example, a 15 dB loss here. We need to compensate for it. We need to uh, improve, well, uh, we aim to improve the transmit power so that there's, there's, there's no power loss from the receiver's point of view. So basically, we center the PDF uh, at 0 dB here. 0 dB represents uh, 1 in normal scale. So there's no, no gain, no loss. So we center the PDF here. Um, later on, we will we'll talk about uh, um, power uh, budget. Uh, that will consider the loss part of the PDF. But it's also important to remember that there is also a gain uh, part of the PDF. There is also a chance that we will get <clears throat> a power gain. <clears throat> um, so for CDF, um, as K increases, so if K become infinite, it will be it will be almost like a steep uh, step function. So it would uh, become a one at uh, zero dB here. So no gain, no loss. <clears throat> um, so K equals zero would be a uh, relay fitting, which is, uh, which is a bad effect. Um, so basically, when you have a lot of uh, reflections, it gives you more randomness. So you have more uncertainty, you have more flat curve here. But if you have a higher level of uh, long side, it gives you more certainty because long side is certainty. And you get a uh, more, uh, a curve that's more similar to a direct delta function. Um, and then, let us uh, take a look at the uh, magnitudes. Let's first uh, look at the figures uh, vertically. So the first one here is uh, really distributed amplitude. <clears throat> it's recorded within 0 0.5 seconds. Um, so you can see that 0 dB, so the scale here is uh, dB. 0 dB is something we expected uh, when we transmit a signal after we take into account path loss, after we take into account shadowing fading, uh, for fast fading, we, the ideal case is the fading amplitude is 0 dB. Um, but there will be fluctuations because of uh, fast fading, right? Sometimes there is gain, but uh, we, um, we concern more about the, the loss here. So sometimes you can see there are many deep fittings where the fitting power um, is fitted over 20 dB. So 20 dB is 100 times. So this is a very severe effect. Sometimes signal, pow uh, signal power is fitted by over 100 times. You can imagine how severe that uh, fast fading can be. That is the first observation here. The second observation is the whole the whole figure is recorded within 0 0.5 seconds, so half a second. And we already have so many values um, here. So this is a this is the biggest, one of the biggest differences between fast fading and slow fading. And this is also why it's called fast fading. For propagation pass loss and for shadowing slow fading, the fading value doesn't change this quickly. So normally for um, propagation pass loss, which is, which is a signal power loss over distance, once you know the distance, that power loss value is fixed. For shadowing effect, it is caused by a sudden blockage by a building and hills and the surrounding 
any surrounding environment that has uh, obstacles. So that environment doesn't change very quickly as well. So normally over time, those uh, those fitting wa values doesn't change at all. So normally what we do is we can compensate for those values as a transmitter by increasing the transmit power. However, what's tricky about uh, fast fitting is it fluctuates, it, it fluctuates uh, so quickly that the, it's impossible for the transmitter to, uh, to adjust its transmit power based on these instantaneous fluctuations. Um, so we need to, uh, we need to uh, plan for the transmit power by distribution. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. Um, so there are two things here. First is the fluctuation is very severe. And second, the fluctuation is really fast. That's why it's called fast fading. And then if we look at the figures vertically, we can see that as the K factor increases, so it's uh, represented in uh, decibel, uh, we can see that eventually it become more and more like certain approaching to uh, uh, a zero dB, which is uh, one in normal scale. So it will be almost like there's no fast fading. It's only one that is applied to the signal um, with some fluctuations. So when K approach to uh, 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 one K approach to infinite uh, to infinite, um, it will be exact one. Uh, in reality, six dB is already a quite high uh, K factor. So once again, K factor measures the power ratio between uh, low side uh, and non low side. We uh, didn't talk about the distribution of phase. Um, so you probably you will probably you will probably learn about it in uh, later sessions. Uh, the distribution of uh, uh, channel phase is normally modeled by uh, uniform, uh, yeah, un uniform distribution within the range of zero to uh, two pi. So for relay fitting, when there is no long side, the phase would also look a bit more random. And then as uh, K increases, uh, the phase would become more Uh, the face would become more um, periodic, so more certainty. Let me see what the question is. Uh, isn't relay and race at k? The, yes. So relay and uh, race at k equals zero is the same. But uh, here zero is uh, dB. So uh, originally what we defined was uh, uh, this is uh, in normal scale. So k, when k equals zero, it become a uh, relay distribution. And uh, so relay distribution is also a special case of recent distrib distribution. You can also use uh, this di distribution and then say we have k equals zero. That's also fun. But k equals zero, it become a relay distribution. Um, in the figure I showed you, k factor is in dB, so actually k here equals one, and then uh, k factor for relay fitting in normal scale uh, k equals zero for these two. I hope that answers your question. Um, okay. Yes, okay, good. Um, so yeah, we are going to talk about uh, power budget, which is uh, uh, our plan for the transmit power. So how much transmit power we need for receiver to receive uh, enough signal power. 
So the reason that I uh, keep emphasizing there are three levels of uh, um, channel modeling is that we are going to consider them separately in power budget. So there is a propagation path loss, which is a signal uh, power loss over distance, and then shadowing uh, slow fading, which is a sad, sudden blockage, and then fast fading, which is uh, because of multipath effect. And normally, as a receiver, we also have additive uh, white Gaussian noise, uh, which is over always there to uh, corrupt the received signal. Um, so this figure, uh, it would be helpful if you can uh, draw this uh, figure on a piece of paper by yourself. It will help you to understand um, what power budget is. Um, so let's go through this uh, together. Um, do ask me a question and tell me if it's confusing at any point. Uh, I hope I can make it as clear as possible. So if, if we look at this direction first, from base station to a mobile station, the distance between base station and the mobile station is normally known. We normally need to locate uh, where the mobile station is. Um, when we know the distance, we can calculate the path loss, which, which is the first level of the channel modeling, right? So we normally can calculate that there is this much of power loss. We can expect this, this much of power loss for the first level of uh, channel modeling. So there are three, uh, we, we have learned three methods for path loss, which are free space path loss and uh, ground reflection uh, to ray path loss, and also has uh, urban model. So all, all of these three functions, they are function of distance. So with the uh, distance, we evaluate the power loss of the first level of the of the of the channel uh, channel model, and then the second level is uh, shadowing effect. We place the uh, PDF centered at uh, the power um, after we after we consider the first level, the power would drop to this level, and then we center the shadowing effects PDF at here. So this is the expectation of uh, the power loss of the first level. There will be gains and there will be loss. We care about loss. Um, and the PDF always has, always has long tails. What we want to do here is to make sure that for 98 to 99% of the chance that uh, so power loss is compensated. So we cut off one to two percent of the tail, and then we evaluate how much power loss we have for the second level of uh, the fading. So shadowing effect. We uh, we learned before that shadowing effect or slow fading is modeled by log normal distribution. So this is a low normal distribution. And then we cut off one to 2%. We need to compensate for this much of power loss. And then the third level is fast, fast fading. So here we say it's a relay fading. Once again, we center uh, the PDF as the expectation of power here. And then we cut off one to two percent of the tail. We want to guarantee that this much of the power is uh, compensated. So from the transmitter to the receiver, if if we have like a minimum re min minimum requirement on the received signal power, 
we need to add this value by uh, the power here and the power here and then the power here so that we can plan how much transmit power we need uh, I hope that's uh, clear we'll look at an example later on um, but I hope that's fairly clear to you um, so the PDF we saw earlier So there are two sides here. So there are two tails here. Can anyone tell me, uh, so the figure we saw later on, we need to cut off one to 2% of the tail. Can anyone tell me uh, which side of the tail are we cutting off? Any guesses? The long side, yes. Um, yeah, exactly, thank you. So the reason that we're cutting off uh, this side is because this side is a uh, lot. We care about loss. We need to do something about loss. We, uh, we don't do anything about gain. Uh, if there's a gain, you get uh, better signal reception. That's a good thing. Uh, but we don't need to, uh, we don't need to change uh, the radiation power. Um, so let's look at an example of power budget. There are a lot of descriptions here. Um, uh, you are suggested to, to read every word of the slides. The slide, everything written on the slide is important. Um, but I don't want to give that kind of lecture that uh, I, I read every word. Um, it would, uh, it would it wouldn't, it w probably wouldn't be very clear to you. So I want to emphasize here on this slide, there are two things for you to, uh, to, 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 to learn in, according, in accordance with um, the figure here. So first is the total power loss is uh, the summation of th all, all the three power loss. So the path, of, uh, path loss and the shadowing effect and the fast fading. We need to take into, into account um, the power uh, fading po uh, power loss of all the three combined together. And then the required transmit power is uh, determined by how much receive power you require um, plus all the, all the loss that you take into account. So I highlight these two uh, for you. And then the rest is, uh, is an example that you can look at. Um, we, let's look at the result of this example together. So if we consider two cells, one is bigger, 300 meters, another is smaller, 100 meters. So uh, from the previous page, uh, the example has a slow fading of 14 dB and fast fading of 7 dB. These two values are also called uh, margin. And then uh, based on Hata's uh, urban model, uh, if we set up a uh, distance and we, we also have set up uh, the antenna elevation, which, which is uh, the height of uh, the base station, then we can calculate um, the first level of the path loss. So for the uh, big cell is this much, for the smaller cell is H this much. So you can, you can imagine that uh, the first level here is really, uh, the, the, the power loss is really large compared to slow fading, compared to slow fading and fast fading. Um, so normally, uh, the power loss over distance is the biggest source of uh, signal power loss. And then for the bigger cell, we get uh, this total value of uh, the signal uh, power loss. And then for the smaller cell, we get this total 
value of power loss. And then we assume a receiver sensitivity, which is a requirement of the minimum received power uh, this much. This is a 2G standard. Uh, over time, we change a little bit, but it's basically the same. In exams, you should, uh, you should know the terminology is uh, receiver sensitivity. But what what it, what what it is is uh, is the minimum 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 requirement of the received power. Um, so uh, you then you you add this power uh, to the all the loss, you get the requirement on the transmit power, which is uh, fifty watts for the bigger cell, uh, zero point five watts for the smaller cell. So it actually makes sense. That uh, um, so you can see here is the radiation power difference between big cell and smaller cell is quite huge. So it, it actually makes sense to deploy a smaller cell um, whenever you can, so that the radiation power is smaller. It's more. It's more green. Um, so basically, uh, so the normal. Uh, the general rule is that, uh, first of all, uh, the propagation path loss, so the path loss over distance is the biggest source of signal power decay. And uh, the longer the distance, the bigger the loss. And also, if you put the antenna to, at a higher uh, altitude, so if you put it uh, at a building building top, then you would, uh, you would have a higher um coverage um but if you put it uh too near to the ground then the coverage would be smaller that is also why in 6 3 we want to integrate uh aeronautical communication and satellite communication into commercial uh terrestrial communication because from the airplane and from the uh, satellite it has really good uh, looking angle to the ground, so it can provide good coverage. Um, before we finish today, I want to talk quickly about coursework, which is really, really important. Um, so you will have your first uh, coursework. Let me share my screen. Now you can see on the course website, um, if you see the resources here, you see the coursework here is ready for you. The deadline is 5th of March. Uh, I didn't change the document because I worry that I make a mess um, on the figures. Um, so this document is actually from last year. So somewhere it said the deadline last year was uh, 4th of March. Um, but this year is 5th of March, which is, which is not that much a difference. But uh, you need to remember that it's a uh, highlight as a, uh, as a link. Um, so if you look at the figure, it looks really complicated, but it's, it's not that complicated. I will walk you through um, a, a briefly on this uh, coursework. So you will have six users. For each user, you will, you will have four antennas. They will transmit signals at the same time. And then as a receiver, you receive signal in this form. You receive all the, all the, all the signals. And then you, you've got H here. H is fast fading only. We only consider fast fading uh, here. And then uh, this is the noise. Uh, so you, you get a big figure in here. Um, there is MATLAB code available to download um, here, supporting MATLAB, MATLAB code, uh, which represents an example um, here. So uh, if you have six users and you make five users silent, so they don't transmit anything, and then for the first user, you have four antennas but you only uh, like uh, the uh, user to use two antennas at first uh, over two times loss. So just 
52 signals over two time slots. All the other users are silent. And then as a receiver, you receive a signal like this and then do signal, signal detection and then recover the signal of the first user. So if you run the uh, MATLAB program uh, that you can download from the course work, uh, on the course website, uh, the figure you get is this, this one. So only the first user has a waterfall BR that drop uh, with uh, SNR. All the other users, uh, there is no BR because we, we didn't transmit any signal. So your job here is to make sure that all the users, they have a waterfall BR that drop uh, as SNR increases. So N0 here is uh, the power of the noise. So one over N0 is uh, noise ratio. So your job is to make sure all the users they have uh, this waterfall BR. Uh, also, you should, uh, you should design a system that can improve the performance as best as possible. So for four signal, for six users transmitting always for a ten, uh, six users, sorry, did I say six? Six users uh, and each one using four antennas, there are different uh, choices on signal transmission. So your job is to, to find out a choice that minimize um, that can improve the performance as best as possible. So you need to, you, you need to submit four things, including your, your MATLAB code. You should revise the code that you download from the website and then keep the input output format so that your program can run on my computer. And I will mark your 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 coursework based on um, your program that run on my computer. If it doesn't run, you'll receive a penalty. Um, so the marking will be based on uh, the BR performance. There are some tips here. For example, you are expected to uh, spend this much of time, so don't overspend um, time on this coursework, but do expect uh, how difficult it is. Um, and uh, you are encouraged to uh, discuss uh, with your uh, classmates about different uh, different choices for transmission and how to improve the performance, but don't copy each other. Uh, you'll receive a penalty. Um, so I'll give you three extra tips um, that would uh, hopefully make your life a little bit easier. Um, they are, these tips are not secrets. You can find, find them on and online. Um, so when you when you look at this compli complicated uh, problem, it looks really complicated, but it's important to solve the problem step by step. So the first step, the first step you want to look at is uh, here for user one. You already have a good uh, BR performance, but you you are only using you are only using two antennas here. So the first step. Uh, is how to use four antennas. So the thing you need to look at is uh, for two antennas, it's called the STBC. And then what is the transmission pattern for four, uh, uh, for, for, for four antennas? You can look it up from book chapters or uh, online sources, but preferably book chapters so that you, you can see a, a lot more uh, organized um, uh, choices and the more decisions. So for the first step, you will uh, be able to use four antennas for first user. And then second step, you want to use all four, six users. Uh, when six users, they transmit signal together. When six users transmit signal together, there will be interference, and you need interference cancel, uh, cancellation technique. Um, so you, uh, the second thing you need to look at is interference cancellation. Um, so there are some materials on the slides. Um, if you look at the slides uh, for later, 
uh, sessions. Uh, so the sessions we haven't covered so far, uh, there will be interference cancellation methods. Um, so do check on lecture notes. Um, read a little bit uh, ahead uh, so that you, you see how to mitigate interference. So the second step is uh, make sure that all the users they have uh, BR uh, waterfall like BR. And then the third thir third tip is uh, also not a secret that for any wireless communication system you need error correct error cor error correction code error correction code uh, all the way from 2G uh, you need error correction code. So you need some choice of error correction code so that the performance of all users can be improved as much as possible. So you need to uh, be careful that all the programs have to be um, have to be able to fit in uh, these two functions. So don't make it overly complicated. Um, but uh, but do approach this uh, step by step. Um, so um, so yeah, hope you do it well. Um, that's all from today. If you have any questions, send me an email. Um, so yeah, see you on Friday.